While some seriously bad shows and movies from old franchises have come out in recent years, nothing compares to the damage done to Star Wars because Star Wars is the mythos of the film medium. As a matter of fact, most of Disney's franchises are in a bit of trouble right now. They seem to have lost all creative ability and forgotten what objective truth means. At least when they made cartoon remakes of old fairy tales, for instance, they stayed marginally true to the overall message. Now the remakes of those remakes are money-grubbing movies and shows only meant to create a profit. Oh, I can actually feel my life essence draining from me as I watch this. Not that there's something wrong with trying to make a profit, but it shouldn't be the highest priority when telling a story. The story and objective truth must come first, then profit will come second. It's actually a pretty simple formula. You see, when telling a story, a company has a much bigger responsibility than these corporations seem to realize. Storytelling in the movie and television medium means storytelling in the realm of pop culture, which in turn influences all of Western culture. It's one of the reasons why movies, especially Star Wars, are not just movies. Our kids and our young adults learn these lessons that stories are trying to teach, and if these stories are not objectively true, then these young people are learning the wrong lessons. The sequel trilogy is filled to the brim with these terrible and objectively wrong messages in their storytelling, and one of the main problems is their approach to men. Don't worry, by the way, we will eventually get to how girls and women are portrayed in motion pictures, but that's next video. The sequel trilogy really seems to have a problem with masculine traits, and they aren't really shy about it. So let's break this down by starting with the new characters. Finn is probably the worst treated in the entire trilogy, so let's start with him. He lacks a clear story. He follows a girl around that he is permanently in her friend zone, and when he finally has a moment of true character development and heroic self-sacrifice, it gets stolen by a girl he seems to have put in his friend zone. Seriously, the romance in these movies? It's just plain bad. That's how we're gonna win. Not fighting what we hate. Saving what we love. You serious? Finn is probably the most tragic of all the male characters in all of Star Wars, and not good tragic, because his scream time tells the audience that he's important, but the overall story development proves that he isn't. He's like a side character or an extra that kept butting in on set, and it's rather disgusting to see how he's treated. No wonder John Boyega wanted nothing to do with his franchise when it was all said and done. Widely polled as the most popular of the new characters of Star Wars, Kylo Ren is maybe the only male character to be treated with any sort of respect. Nonetheless, Kylo Ren is still a poorly written character. He's overly emotional, even for a villain, and has some of the most unbelievable moments in the entire arc. Kylo Ren feels like a character that is perpetually in a state of emotional limbo, where nothing he does tracks with the character's current direction. On the one hand, it never clearly makes him evil enough to believe that he is capable of killing his own parents. It's just dumb. Why is he dumb? I don't know. And on the other, it's equally never believable that he would turn back to the light. This means that just about everything Kylo does seems forced rather than natural. Even his weird obsession with Rey is uncomfortable at best, and their kiss at the end of the trilogy makes less sense than Padme being cool with Anakin killing everyone in the Sand People village. And not just the men, but the women, and the children too. Several days later. It's just crappy emasculating garbage writing. And then there's Poe. Poe Dameron is probably the most alpha male character written in the entire trilogy, and honestly, it makes sense that he is. If you've ever met fighter pilots in real life, you'll know that they have a certain uh, attitude that helps them to keep the edge that they need. What happens to Poe's character in The Last Jedi is one of the most toxic moments in all of cinema. The mutiny he is committing is not only warranted, but necessary, and his desperate plan, while completely stupid, is also warranted. Well, maybe not that plan, but coming up with a plan is certainly warranted. To clarify, when you are in command of a military unit of any kind, and there are very few people left in your command, and you are on a desperate mission of survival against overwhelming odds, you do not hide that plan from your CAC, or whatever the pilot readiness commander's title is in Star Wars, I don't know what it's called. Hold on! Captain, you're not allowed it. Fly boy. Cut it, lady. We had a fleet, now we're down to one ship, and you've told us nothing. Tell us! that we have a plan. And expect not to have repercussions. Vice Admiral Holdo, 
I am relieving you of your command for the survival of this ship, its crew, and the resistance. This is toxic leadership at best. Consider all the times in the rebellion that command is planning the operations with their officers, and this admiral decides to throw all of that under the bus. Because of what? Poe needs to learn a lesson in the chain of command and get his ego in check? Of course you do. I understand. I've dealt with plenty of trigger-happy flyboys like you. You're impulsive. Dangerous. And the last thing we need right now. So stick to your post and follow my orders. This movie tries its best to paint the failure of the mission squarely on the shoulders of the manliest of the new characters, and the truth is, all of these problems, from the mutiny to the death of these remaining few resistance fighters, is completely the fault of their man-hating admiral. The deconstruction of men doesn't stop there. The treatment of our favorite male characters from the original trilogy is also appalling. All of the self-growth and maturity that these characters have learned is destroyed within minutes of having been reintroduced to them. Here's an example. Han is no longer a selfless man ever protecting of his woman, but instead has gone back to smuggling and abandoned his efforts to save his son. This is a Millennium Falcon. You're Han Solo. I used to be. In other words, Disney made the most charismatic and alpha male hero of the original trilogy and made him a deadbeat dad that's killed by his own son in the first movie of a trilogy and thought everyone would just get on board with it. Good job. And then there's Luke. Luke is one of the most important characters in all of film history, and it's because he learns the lessons that the ultimate hero archetype must learn in order to truly be that archetype. Unlike heroes in other movies, where heroics are often rewarded with prizes like the girl, the adoration from the masses, or a bunch of money, Luke gets nothing of any real value to the living world, and instead he simply becomes a Jedi, a career path that is thankless and self-sacrificing and ultimately is only in service to others. He has learned to let go of his fear in the face of pure evil and learned to let the living force decide the fate of those around him. The sequel trilogy takes all of that growth and throws it all away. Luke is now more afraid than ever and somehow Luke Skywalker, completely out of character, almost betrayed his nephew the child of his only sister and his most beloved and best friend. It's unbelievably stupid and reverses everything we know about the greatest of all characters. Heck, even Akbar doesn't get the leadership role he deserves and has a death that may as well have been written on the crawl for all the importance it has in the movie. And worst of all, it took everything that Vader went through to come back to the light and be Anakin Skywalker again and reversed all of it by bringing back Palpatine. This is some kind of joke. You guys put me on? By killing the Emperor and bringing balance to the Force through self-sacrifice and saving his beloved son, the original trilogy showed that men can be redeemed through extraordinary sacrifice and bravery. And Disney doesn't seem to understand that at all. And before you might say that this is a general deconstruction of Star Wars or just bad storytelling and not man-hating, then why is Leia still on her path and the men aren't? Why is Rey so powerful that she beats Luke? These movies are definitely written poorly in general totally agree, but there is also a focus on making women stronger at the expense of men and the exploits of past men. There is nothing wrong with having strong men save the day, and there is nothing toxic about men saving women for that matter. Men have been saving the day through self-sacrifice and bravery all throughout history, and still do every day, and it seems regressive rather than progressive to suggest that these traits are toxic in some way. It's okay for strong women to still be attracted to stronger men, and it's okay to have men in leadership roles. That's just called reality. Movies today are hell-bent on teaching bad and incomplete messages to young girls at the expense of all boys. And it's kind of disgusting, really. If movies and shows want to weaken society, then keep teaching young men to be followers, weak-willed, and cowards, and take a backseat to the toxic traits of the women around them. The original and prequel trilogies showed men how to be men by telling them to control their emotions and to let go of their fear, anger, and hatred, the typical emotions that come from the aggressiveness of typically male traits. It teaches young men to be problem solvers and quick thinkers, to pursue their goals relentlessly and confidently. It also teaches young men to be loyal to their friends and their causes by being willing to lay down their lives for those that they love or for a righteous ideal. And those trilogies do all of this without taking anything away from the female characters in the movies. 
Leia is still a princess and the leader of the rebellion, and Padme is still a brave queen and senator, despite needing to be saved from time to time, and despite still having the hots for their saviors. Yeah, it's like a tractor beam of hotness. All of that's still okay. This, of course, is not the only reason why the movie sucks so much, but it is one of the many reasons why the original and prequel trilogies are superior to the sequels, and why the sequels are generally and objectively terrible. Whether this is a deliberate or accidental bit of political and cultural messaging, the outcome will be the same. The new movies and shows coming out today are teaching our boys and young men to be weak, and a society with weak men is a doomed society. I hope you've enjoyed this two-part series, and I hope I've earned your subscription today. Next time, we'll be talking about these ladies and branch off a bit into a couple of different franchises. If you want to watch the first parts of this series, then check out this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.